Hello and welcome. I want to thank you for taking some time out of your day today to watch this video. We're going to be looking at Enterprise PDM troubleshooting with various log files. My name is Katherine Smith. I'm an Enterprise PDM Applications Engineer with Trimec. Let's go ahead and get started here. Have you ever had some strange issues with Enterprise PDM? Maybe you're having some crashes or you're seeing some random error messages. Perhaps you can't log in to Enterprise PDM or you can't access certain files. Maybe you're just seeing some odd occurrences or you simply want to check the system. Well, there's a few different places that you can find information about Enterprise PDM, uh, which are going to be some log files. The Enterprise PDM Archive Server Log, the Enterprise PDM Client Log, the Server Event Viewer Log Files, and the Client Event Viewer Log Files. Let's start off by looking at the Enterprise PDM Server and Client Log Files. Every client install of Enterprise PDM should have the administration tool installed on the computer. That administration tool gives you access to the Archive Server Log. Right-clicking on the Archive Server listed inside of the Administration tool will give you an option to click on Show the Archive Server Log. Now, you do have to have appropriate rights or permissions to access and see this Archive Server Log file. For the Client Log file, underneath the Local Settings in the Administration tool, you can double-click on the log file that's seen there, or alternatively, you can use the View drop-down menu and click on the local log file listed there. The Enterprise PDM Server and Client log files contain two different views, the full log and the summary. Now, these two different views contain the same information, it's just shown in very different ways. Uh, you also have the ability to filter or search for specific text within that log file. If you have it open for an extended period of time and you want to refresh it, there is a button there that you can use to refresh the log file. You can also empty the log file or copy it if you need to send it to your local value-added reseller or someone else within the organization. So once you've gone through and looked at the server or client log files for Enterprise PDM and you see a, an error message, uh, where do you go to find information? Well, you can always access the knowledge base inside of the SOLIDWORKS customer portal to check to see what information is out there regarding that particular error message. So I'm going to jump on over to my administration tool here. And uh, this is my archive server. So I'm going to right click and show the archive server log. So as you can see here, this is going to be the summary view, uh, which shows the information error and warning messages uh, that are related to this particular archive server. If I wanted to break it out and show the full log, I can click on this button here, and it's going to break it out. Now it shows, again, the same information. It's just in the summary, it's line item by line item, and to break out to show all of the information, you double click on it, whereas the full log is going to break out that information into little blocks here. Red is going to be an error message and yellow is going to be a warning message. Um, I personally prefer to show the summary rather than the full log, but to each their own. If you prefer the full log, use that. Uh, so again, in order to um, open up one of these, you just double click on it and it's going to open up the message. It's going to give a description, the date, module, function, error code, and then an, an error code general description. So here a communication link failure occurred when accessing the database server. Uh, maybe the server service had been restarted or the network might have gone down temporarily. Okay. Uh, so that's the archive server log file. For the local log file, we can double click here underneath local settings and open it up. Again, you've got the summary view as well as the full log view. Um, here is where you can refresh the log file if you've have, had it open for an extended period of time and you want to see if there's new information available. 
here is how you can empty the log file and here we can search for specific text maybe i want to search for the user manny and we can see here that manny logged in on the file vault quick start uh, on february 3rd 2015 at approximately noon so if we keep clicking on this button here it's just going to go through and find where manny has logged in uh, within this log file or basically wherever Manny is showing in the description. Um, if I wanted to copy this log file or the archive server log file, I would click on this little copy button. Please note that there is no save option underneath the file menu. So if you wanted to send this log file to someone, you would need to click on the copy button and then potentially on the desktop or on some other local drive, uh, right click and paste or use your keyboard shortcut control V. So here, for the client log file, it's going to create a file called SolidWorks Enterprise PDM. And the type of file is a, a .cog, uh, which is a SolidWorks Enterprise PDM log file type. So uh, for the archive server, when it's copied <clears throat> excuse me, and pasted, to potentially the desktop, uh, it's going to be pasted as the name of the archive server.cog. So you can uh, now take these two different log files and send them to your local value added reseller if you need to, or um, to someone else within your organization. So that's the uh, enterprise PDM server and client log files, how to access them and the different um, options that are available. So let's switch over and take a look at some event viewer log files. These can be found on the server and on the client. They are built into or are part of the Microsoft operating system, uh, the Windows um, operating system. And uh, if you want to find out where this is located, um, you can start by clicking on the start button and then in the search box, type the words event viewer and open up the application. Or uh, you can use the alternative method, which is to go to the folder location C Windows System 32 and double click on the event vwr.exe application, which will open up the event viewer. <clears throat> the event viewer log files, uh, there's going to be two main files that you're going to want to look at, the application log file and the system log file. Um, inside of the event viewer, you can expand the Windows Logs folder, and you'll be able to click on the application uh, log to open it up, or you can click on the system log to open that one up. You can also filter these log files for critical warning and error messages. Uh, that way you don't have a whole bunch of extraneous um, information messages that you don't really need to see. So after you've filtered the log file, if you wanted to send it to your local value added reseller or potentially uh, send it to someone else within your organization, you can save the filtered log file. There's going to be an option in the right hand task pane um, interface where you can save the filtered log file. I would recommend choosing the option to display information for uh, these languages using that radio button and then making sure that the checkbox is selected for English so that you can en enable viewing this log file correctly on other computers. So where can you find information about the error messages or the warnings or critical messages that you find inside of the event viewer log files? Well, you can go to internet search sites such as Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. You can also go to the knowledge base within the customer portal website through SolidWorks. Uh, you can take a look at the SolidWorks forums to see if anyone else has been having issues with these and are discussing these messages or you can always contact your local value-added reseller for assistance. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, our event viewer. This is on my personal computer, which is both the server and the client. I've navigated to see Windows System 32, and I can double-click on the event viewer uh, application to open it up. 
as I mentioned before, we can expand out this Windows Logs um, folder here and click on Application to open it up. So lots of really good information is available for the application in the system log file, but I don't really care about uh, updates and logons and things that are just an information level message. So I want to come over to the right hand side and filter the current log file for critical warning and error messages only clicking OK. Now I can see that there are some warnings, some errors, looks like some bonjour issues there. We also have uh, database issues here for SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. The import XML failed to occur. Maybe some other information like uh, failing to connect to the server local. Maybe the server wasn't on um, when it tried to connect at 8.06 this morning. So um, if you want to get some additional information and you don't like this split pane, you can double click on any of the error or warning or critical messages and have it open up in a, a separate window and it'll give you the general information as well as the details and you can expand out to see some information about the system and the event data available inside of the event properties for this particular message. Once you've filtered the application log file, we can come over to the right hand side and save the filtered log file. Uh, I would suggest saving it in an easily accessible location, for example the desktop, and I personally like to save these as app log or syslog. That way I know that this is the application log file versus uh, the system log file. And here I'm going to display information for these languages showing that the English is checked. Click OK and it's going to save that file. Let's go through and do the same thing for system. So I clicked on the system log file here. I'm going to filter the current log for critical warning and error messages. I can see a whole bunch of different error messages and, and warnings. Now a lot of these don't have anything to do with Enterprise PDM. We can look at the uh, source here to see if it's uh, related to Enterprise PDM. The kernel processor obviously is not going to be um, necessarily related to Enterprise PDM. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of really good information here as well. Um, so let's go ahead and save the filtered log file again. I mentioned before that I like to call this one syslog and the other one app log. It's going to save it to the desktop, making sure that we're displaying information for English. Clicking OK. And now inside of my desktop I should have the syslog file and the app log file. When I, I send these to maybe my local value added reseller or someone else within the organization, when they double click on the app log, it should open up inside of the event viewer for them as well. Okay. So now let's take a look at collecting support information using Enterprise PDM. So instead of having to go out and, and capture the archive server log file, the client log file, um, the event viewer information, uh, maybe information about the system. Uh, I'm going to use something that is found inside of the administration tool to collect multiple different support information documents uh, using the um, Enterprise PDM collect support information tool. So you can find this again in the administration tool. Right click on the vault in the admin tool and click collect support information. It's going to go through a wizard and a zip file is going to be created at the end. So the support information tool uh, collects the following items, the archive server log file, the database statistic information, the enterprise PDM application version information, enterprise PDM registry section, the environment information, installed add-ins, the enterprise PDM client log file, and the local event log file. So it captures all of this information in one go rather than having to pick and choose each in it every individual file listed there. There's some optional files that can be collected such as the archive files, a SQL backup file, or additional information or notes that you can manually type in. Now for the SQL backup file it can't be copied automatically 
to the zip file that's being created. So it must be copied manually from this server. So you'll have to go to wherever that SQL is installed um, on that server and manually copy it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our um, administration tool again. There it is. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the collect support information um, option. So I'm right clicking on my vault and I'm choosing collect support information. And this wizard opens up to help um, collect the different files. So here I can uncheck if I don't want to include something or I can leave everything checked by default, which I'm going to. Clicking next. This is the optional section where you can select certain archives to include in the support package. You can add files or add, add folders. You have the ability to include old versions or only the latest version of that file from the archive server. I'm going to skip this at this point in time. Here's the optional um, creating of a backup file for the SQL database. If you do want to generate a backup of the SQL database, you need to tell it where to put it um, for the uh, location on the ser SQL server system. The additional information is where you can type your own notes about the issue or what you want to have uh, shown to the person that you're sending this support information to. And then you need to tell it where to put it. Um, so maybe on the desktop or some other location and it's going to create a zip file there. So that's how you can use the collect support information um, tool with Enterprise PDM. So as a recap for the log files that we looked at for Enterprise PDM, uh, we started off with the EPDM log files, which are found in the admin tool. We looked at the archive server log file and the client local log file. Um, we also took a look at the Windows uh, Event Viewer, which is found in the Start menu by typing in Event Viewer and opening up the application, or going to see Windows System 32 and double-clicking on eventvwr.exe application. Once the Event Viewer was open, we took a look at the application log file and the system log file and also showed how to save that file uh, to send to your local value-added reseller or someone else within your organization. Uh, last but not least, we took a, a quick look at how to use the Collect Support Information tool, which is found in the Enterprise PDM Administration tool, by right-clicking on the vault and opening up the wizard and collecting the various information so that we could potentially send it to a local value-added reseller or uh, just to take a look at the information. So thank you very much for taking time out of your day again um, to watch this video. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, looking forward to sharing some more Enterprise PDM information with you next time.